Hello, I'm Paddy from creativemedia.org.uk and I've had my warble whistle for a little while and I thought now's the time to do a proper review but I've put it back in its box so I'm going to relive the unboxing experience for you all. I paid around £200 because I live in Britain for mine. Um, on top of that you'd usually expect some kind of um, import tax as well. That's the bad thing with importing from abroad. Um, and it all depends on the pound to dollar ratio or whatever your currency is. So the warble can work out fairly expensive, but for me it was £200, including the postage, but not including the tax. And the tax can be sort of anything from 50 to 60 70 80 pounds depending on the exchange rate. So bear in mind you may get an expensive extra bill, which is quite a large chunk of the original cost of this thing. So what you get in your box? fairly small cardboard box for the money but it's not really a big whistle is it so let's see inside you get a um, well it's a branded it's branded sink wire I don't know if that's branded or not but a quite nice braided cable that's quite pleasant to use it does tend to kink a little bit like that but I've not really had any trouble with it yet and it is a USB to micro USB so you can replace them, get a much longer one if you need. They're not really a problem. You get a vented mouthpiece included, which is good. I think these might have been separate at one stage, but I've made a modification on this. So I'll explain more about that why later. That's the bagpipe mouthpiece, this little bit of plastic tube and some super lube with PTFE, synthetic grease, which I've not used. Um, I don't really feel the need of it. Um, I guess you meant to use it on, on, your, <laughs> on your warble. And last but not least, the warble itself comes in quite a nice box, black box. And inside, foam, nice sparkly foam. And inside, there is the warble itself, a plastic tube with real holes in. That's the big difference between this one and a lot of other instruments I've seen. A lot of the other ones have plastic buttons on. This has got some plastic buttons as well. But the main keys, they're not, they're not keys, they're holes. They feel just like a penny whistle. The difference from a penny whistle is there's an extra hole in the back, like a recorder has, and an extra hole on the bottom. So there's not just six finger holes, there's a seventh one as well, which is quite a nice little bonus to have. You don't have to touch it at all. This is based on an Ilion pipe, I think, which I think have an extra hole. I wouldn't know, I've never played one. I've always wanted to play one. And that's really my main reason for getting this is because I've wanted to get a go on Ilion pipes and they've always been kind of either too expensive or impossible to get hold of. But this is better in a lot of ways than Ilion pipes. Quieter and you can put them in any pitch you like. But best of all for me, it's got penny whistle fingering. So I know what I'm doing. The thing you don't get is one of these. If, you've, if you're using an iPad, you'll need one of these to plug it in. There's a lightning to USB connector. And I've got the kind with a power input as well, because otherwise you'll be playing away and your battery will be running out and you, you want to plug it in, but you can't because you're using the socket for the warble. So I'm going to plug this into my mains power so I won't run out. Then I'm going to plug in my warble connector, USB. Then I'm going to plug in the other end to the warble. There's a socket in the bottom. Quite weird having an instrument with a socket in. Takes a bit of getting used to. Also in the bottom there's another socket. And that's an optional extra part. I think it's a jack, a mini jack. It's an extra part where you can press the the bottom of it against your knee while you're playing, which I think is a Ilian pipe thing. You kind of block the end of the pipe off and it gives you an extra note or does something. I think actually in the software you can control what that does. So you can make the, the bottom button thing do different things like turning drones on and off or changing the key or various things like that. Anyway, now's my time to plug in my iPad to the whistle put on my vented mouthpiece as well because this really feels like playing a, a whistle 
the config tool is a web page. The app actually loads a web page, and this is what is currently a bit of a failing of this configuration thing, because if you're out of range of any wireless, then and you and you run the app, then you'll find that it it won't actually load anything because it it tries to load the web page and there's no web for it to load from. If you leave it open, like I've done now, because I'm out of range of my wireless at the moment, but I've opened it while I was in range, and I've left it open, and as long as I don't close it or shut down the whole tablet, that will stay working sort of locally. So that's something to bear in mind. If you go into a festival to play an instrument, you won't be able to configure it unless you can get a connection to a wireless. I have seen this working on an Android tablet as well, so that can be done, and it will work on a computer as well. You don't need all this um, all this gubbins here. You can just plug your USB straight into your computer, and I've managed to configure it from a laptop. Even from an old 10.6 um, Mac laptop, the, software, the um, web page would work with that, and the configuration worked fine, as it does on Windows 10. I've not tried it on an older version of Windows, but I would have thought it would probably work on reasonably old versions of Windows, but not mega old ones. Okay, I'll get on to playing this thing soon, but you can always wind forward and listen to me playing. But I've got some other videos up with me playing this and not telling you anything about what it's like. So now I'm going to tell you what it's like. I said before it's got holes in, so it actually feels really like a penny whistle or a recorder. Um, the holes are about ooh, 5mm, 6 7 mil across, and underneath there are little electronic bits, which aren't buttons at all, they are optical sensors, and they can tell how much light is coming through, and in other words, how much of the hole you're covering. So as you slide your finger off the hole, that should let the um, whistle and the software know where your finger is. On the back, we've got the, the back hole, which like a recorder that controls the octave. Um, in the setup software, the, there's a number of ways you can control the octave. On a traditional penny whistle, you, you just blow harder, there's no hole at the back. You overblow to get the octave. I've tried setting that up on this one, and it does work, but for me, I couldn't get it to work right. It couldn't tell the difference between vibrato and me changing octaves. And somehow on a whistle, that's never a problem, but on this, I'd be doing sort of vibrato, and the octave would be jumping up and down. So I've decided just to learn how to use this back hole to do octaves. You might choose to do something else. You can also make it ignore this back hole entirely. It'll work with all seven holes um, in different modes. And on the app here, you've got a number of different instruments you can set up at once. I've got them all set to the tin whistle mode, but I've got subtle different settings on the two, depending on which instrument I am playing. There's also a number of fingering patterns, so you can have alien pipes, Native American flutes, uh, trumpets, custom, shakuhachi, there's a whole lot of things here. i only interested in tin whistle chromatic, so that's what I've got set up. And when I'm changing tabs to different instrument settings in the application, the little green light on the back is flashing to say something is happening and this thing is being updated. Further down, there's a tiny hole, which is a reset hole, which I've just discovered recently. I did a firmware update, which actually required me to download a piece of software, which I had to run to, to flash the chips inside this. This doesn't have any batteries and doesn't really use power particularly. Well, I, I guess it's powered through the wire. Um, but it does have a very small memory for its settings. So once you set it up, it will remember those settings until you change them later on. At the bottom we've got three buttons. These are actually real clicky buttons like you get on some of those other sort of penny whistle style instruments which you actually press buttons rather than having proper penny whistle style holes. These can be set up to do a whole range of different things like turning on drones. Um, I mean, I've got them set to, to do a semitone shift up and down so I can retune my whistle to any key. And that's a great thing about this if you want to have a whole range of whistles in all the keys, 
just in one instrument, this is that instrument. So um, if people are playing a, some obscure instrument in a bizarre key, then you can just shift and then you, you, you're playing along. Great for jamming. I've got this set up so I can press down the middle button and that will shift up an octave if I press one of the up and down keys, or just the up and downs on their own move me up and down one semitone. You can also have long hold clicks as well to do things like turning on the drones if you're using a um, bagpipe type instrument. There's a whole lot of other settings here, the expression, um, and you can map that to particular CC, um, continuous controller parameters in MIDI, so you could control pitch or velocity or resonance or anything that's a MIDI con continuous controller you can control with this. It's taken me quite a while to get this set up how I want it and I've got two different settings which I use for the different instruments which I'm going to show you today. First I'm going to connect to the warble, hopefully this will work. Let me press connect to warble. Yep, yeah, it's connected to me. I've got firmware version 2 which is the newest one at the moment. I've got this little speaker button at the top so I can actually hear this warble. So let's give it a go. That sounds disgusting. I've been conned. But no, wait a minute. That sound there is just a sound to make you know that your warble is working. And um, I wouldn't really want to play that unless I was doing something a bit experimental and stuck it through a big guitar amplifier with lots of distortion, which might be quite fun. But let's turn that horrible sound off and see what it can really do. Well, the warble makes no sounds on its own. That sound was made by the app. So you need some more apps to actually make sounds. So already we've bought ourselves a um, iPad connector. If you're playing an iPad, that's only if you're using an iPad. If you're using a laptop or a Android, you can probably connect it much more cheaply. The first app I'm gonna show you is one called Sack Paper, which is a Swedish instrument. This one is actually free. And this is where we can start hearing what this thing can really do. And I'm going to try some breath control. So just like I normally do vibrato on a whistle. You saw there I did a half hole and it, it sensed that with it, that op optical sensor. I've not had any trouble with these. I was worried that in different lighting conditions you might find that it didn't detect the light properly. But I've not had any trouble with it. I've not played at a gig where there's been flashing lights yet and that might give it some grief. I really don't know. But this is sounding quite nice. But it's got a limited range. It does have a nice um, transpose. But it's still got that limited range of notes wherever I transpose it. And you notice there I'm doing my top finger off to get the top notes. That's the same as on whistles. You take your top finger off and leave the other five on, you get an extra high note. So that is quite nice. And that's absolutely free, so once you've got your whistle, if you're not sure if you want to keep it or not, and you don't want to spend a lot more money on apps, get the Sack Piper. The Sack Piper is not the best thing you can get. There are, there are better things. Celtic Sounds costs £4.99, but this one has got the Illion Pipes, which is the thing I love. And this one, you notice I can control the volume as well as the pitch, but first I need to change to a different different wall setting. So this instrument is set up for some apps and the next one along is set up for this, the Celtic Sounds app. So back to Celtic Sounds. And you can hear and see that the volume and the pitch changes as I change my breath pressure. I think 
think now, before I play any more of this, is a good time to mention my modification. This is a vented mouthpiece, and it has a hole at the back. You blow down that thing, and air comes out the back. Simple enough. But the air out of your body is damp. And when damp air goes in here, the water's got to go somewhere. It comes out the hole. Fine. But it comes out the hole, runs down the tube, and right here is a hole, and underneath that hole is electronic bits. And I really don't want condensation dribbling down inside my lovely new warble into the electronics, because I think that will be a bit of a recipe for disaster. So this here is simply a piece of a biro. I could remove this from the end of the biro. The biro still works, so no waste there. I just cut it off, slightly paired off the end of it, added a little bit of grease, Vaseline I think, and shoved it in the hole. And now when the wet air comes out, it comes out of this and drips down, totally missing the whistle rather than running down and getting the electronics. So I'd recommend anyone who plays with this vented mouthpiece and is noticing any water coming out of here to make a modification like this. It does alter the, the breathing, the, the, you know, the amount of pressure needed, and it does need quite a hard blow on it, but it does save my whistle from wetness. It could be everything's waterproofed inside here and it's totally safe from, from water, but I don't think it is actually. Anyway, let's play a bit more of this lovely alien pipe. If anyone recognises that, I think that was by a band called Iona, who's a Scottish band who play some amazing sort of folk rock type stuff. It might be they've nicked it from somewhere else, but lovely tune. This one here has a nice reverb that you can make things... And you can control all your reverb that's got a kind of room size and a whole one. You can turn the reverb right off if you're recording. Not only can you do breath vibrato, but you can do finger vibrato, like they do on alien pipes and whistles sometimes too. Which is nice, particularly when you combine it with your own breath vibrato. Doesn't work on all keys though, it doesn't need to work on that low key. Could be possible that you can set that up somewhere. If you're a wobble expert and you, and you know, then let me know. What I can't see on this one is a way of tuning it though. The Sack Piper one has a tuning feature. This one doesn't seem to. It's got a transpose though, so you can. And it's got five instruments, and it does have a whistle, give it a bit of reverb on it. The great thing with with whistle is you've you've got that extra key as well. So there's no switching octaves for that trill, which I don't think you could actually do with breath control. But you can do it that way, and it will also do um, flattened notes.
You don't have to do half holding for everything. Bit trickier. Yeah? So yeah, it actually follows the fingering of a real penny whistle quite faithfully. For the app accordions, I wouldn't recommend using these buttons because since it's sample based, I think the guy that wrote this um, sampled all the notes of a penny whistle. So if you shift this instrument up, then it can't play some of the notes. So like with the sack piper, you just run out of notes to play. So the way to transpose the app accordions is to use the the transpose slider actually on it itself. I've got the pitch bend semitones set to 2. Because that sounds quite realistic, but you can set it right up to 12. And you can get some weird effects. I don't really like. I'm going to close that one down and show you Respiro, which is the other app everyone should get who's got a warble. This one is free as well, and this is the super bargain because it's got six instruments. And I'm just going to change my warble mode. So I'm now I'm an octave too low, and I'm going to switch octaves and get in a more sensible octave. And this one is also breath sensitive, but I had to use some slightly different settings. This free app is associated with a, a paid for piece of software, which is actually proper big money, not like a £4.99 app, which you can use to program all kinds of things. So how a sound responds to the pressure and all kinds of things like that. And you can mix sounds together. So on here, there's just six examples of some of the things you can do with it. So there's a brass synth. And this one, unlike the sample instruments, being a synthesizer, you've got an a massive range so you can just keep going doesn't necessarily sound very nice really high but you've got the scope one thing I've noticed with both the Respiro and the Celtic sounds I can't really tongue very quickly. It's definitely a different technique than on a real penny whistle. But if I take the mouthpiece off and just press on the press of them, you can... There's the, the, the warble isn't having trouble playing quickly. It's um, me and my mouthpiece and my settings as well maybe. So possibly I can get them a bit better, so I can play faster notes. But as it goes, um, I like playing slower stuff anyway. And you can always do slurs, you know, slurred notes. What I like about some of these instruments, in fact all the instruments, is you can get that nice kind of brass tail off. love is if Respiro sold some extra instruments with this so you could, I don't know, pay a few pounds and get, you know, a really nice saxophone or something because I've heard some really nice saxophones. I'd love to be able to play saxophone on my whistle um, and I even thought about getting a kind of mini, mini sax but I've, the, the few times I've played sax it, I just found it quite painful and very confusing with the fingering so if I could get a really good sax sound out of my warble that would be superb. 
Let's go through some of these other sounds. There's a nice clarinet. And... And then, as with the other instruments, you can turn off the reverb. All the reverbs on this and everything on this is preset on these instruments, so you can't change anything particularly. But it's beautifully expressive, and at times I forget that I'm playing an uh, electronic controller. I just think I'm playing an instrument, and I start trying to do things that you can only do on a penny whistle, like, you know, flutter tonguing and and kind of going through the thing. It doesn't really make any difference. I would thoroughly recommend one of these if you're doing gigs, possibly, and needing to get an instrument plugged straight into a PA and not relying on mics. You can do good things with mics for penny whistles, you know, you can put a rubber band and a tight clip mic around there and it sounds fairly good. That's quite a nice sax. <laughs> that wasn't very good, was it? And this is the last one. That's what you get with the Rispero. Is there really anything more I can say about this? I don't think so. It's been re reliable so far. Made myself a bag to carry the thing around because obviously, if you've got a great big tablet like this that you're lugging around and trying to hold this with two hands uh, and actually play music, so I've made a kind of bagpipe bag which is an old tea towel, a tartan one, and an old belt, and I can put my tablet in here and play this and walk around playing to my heart's content. I could even put an extra battery inside this bag to make um, this thing last longer when I'm away off the grid. Apart from the, the drifting problem and the app which you can't um, use when there's no wireless, or you can use while there's no wireless but you can't shut and then reopen again when there's no wireless, that's really my only, only criticisms of this. Everything else has been really good. Take care not to set these buttons to do bizarre things um, while you're off-grid, um, otherwise you'll have to rely on the app to um, turn things back or somebody who's got a laptop or maybe somebody who's got a phone that can give you a hotspot and connect up. It's not that hard really but if you're on stage and your whistle starts behaving funny, I had that button set up to switch off the octave um, control thing at one stage and I suddenly found I couldn't change octave and couldn't get onto the thing to control anything. So that was a bit of a, a depressing moment. So yeah, um, if you can afford it, this is a good buy. It's not going to sound as good as the real Ilium pipes. I mean, I, I love this Ilium pipe sound because I've never played a real one and I think the whistles are a bit less brilliant. But it's a good controller compared to a lot of the other controllers I've seen. This one really does feel like a proper instrument and it's really nice to play. So um, yeah, get get you saving up your um, your money and order one as soon as you can. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye.